So I have a bonus question. And the question is for, you know, when I think of certain um, like personality disorders, because I feel like I've met quite a few like narcissistic personality disorders, like histrionic, you know, like people who are like very manipulative, like how much of that is, I, I know obviously there's a wound there and there's a, there's a mental, something happens in, in that, but like how much of that is like spiritual attack or how much and then because I work also with people who do like deliverance ministry so what would you say as a therapist like I know that yeah there's a not there's not a nice clean break between like the psychology and the spiritual as we're like talking about right. right here is there a time that you're like I think we might need an exorcist exorcist for this like are there are there times that you kind of notice like there is a, like a demonic like oh yeah as I've a, got three I've got three exorcists on speed dial Really? Okay. And then what, so what, how do you discern that as a, like, what would a normal therapist do who does not have this sense at all, who has no clue about the spiritual life? Like what would a normal therapist do versus you that you have three exorcists on call? Well, they would, they would, first of all, they would, they would start medication. So like a lot of the things that show up where we know we're going to, we're going to do a consult or kind of figure you're out. There's a, there's a lot of interplay. So a lot of times some of the, some of the demonic stuff looks like what would be seen as schizophrenia or or those kind of really deep personality disorders that are very pervasive and and sticky and can't can't budge um or just like reality testing type things people have breaks like such severe anxiety that you know they start breaking from reality you know and then it's like the OCD plus you know or you're, you're getting the extra and so then it's like oh well now we we clearly need medication now, sometimes and many times do need medication. So I'm not saying it's an either or. But in terms of your question, that's where my radar goes up. And I'm like, well, let me start asking some other questions. When I first started and I was doing my post-grad, I was, I was consulting with a, a world-renowned psychiatrist who is on a panel for Vatican uh, demonology and, and trains exorcists. And I had a patient who came into my office in Manhattan and she was totally disheveled. Now, I did two years prior to this down in Washington, D.C. at a psychiatric hospital. So I was at the Psychiatric Institute of Washington. I was dealing all day with adult and adolescent uh, severe mental illness and a lot of schizophrenia. So this is like normal for me. And I, now I come up to Manhattan and it's like not as severe, but it's like, so, you know, Manhattan is pretty crazy. So it wasn't always abnormal. But, but this woman walks into my office one day. And I was like, oh, I feel really comfortable in this situation. I feel like I'm back at PIW. She was really, you know, disheveled. And, you know, there's things that are just off when when people have schizophrenia. They don't care about the same kinds of things that everybody else cares about and a lot of times. And so I'm thinking in that lens already. And she starts putting two and two together and she starts telling me what's going on. And I'm like, all right, this is like reality testing problems and you know, all these other hygiene issues and like all these other things. So, um, so I'm talking to my supervisor and he says, well, you know, before you send her to a, a psychiatrist for medication, call this other guy and, and talk to him first. And he's a psychiatrist, but he also has some, uh, some understanding of the spiritual dimension of things. Cause she had brought up a couple of little funny things. And I was like, well, that's interesting. So I call this guy and this is like, gives me chills right now because one of the reality testing things that she did is I was sitting in the chair and I was holding my hand in a certain direction. And uh, I was like holding my thumb inside my fingers and they're just like resting on the arm of my chair. And she said, yeah, see, see what you're doing right now. That's the devil that's making you do that. And I was like, okay, like I've been told worse. <laughs> you know, it's okay. But I brought this up to uh, to, to this, the psychiatrist and his name is Rich Gallagher. And he, he was saying, uh, well, tell me more about this other thing that she said. So he told, she, she told me this other detail about somebody that was at the apartment and dropped off this token and the token had this thing on it. And, and he goes, oh yeah, we got to call the Bishop. And I was like, why do we have to call the Bishop? And he goes, because I know that demon. This is the third time this month he's come and and his, his uh, mention of him has come through my office. I'm like, what demon? He goes, the 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 symbol on that, that token is very particular, and it it has to do with this demon, and the demon is is very real. I was like, uh oh. 
So <laughs> tell me again about what I was doing with my hand. <laughs> so so this demon was like was speaking to her and telling her all these things, and she was reacting in a lot of ways. Now, who's to say that she also didn't have you know some severe mental illness? But but at the and she could you know she definitely got a full evaluation. But at the end of the day, that does happen. And so, and that's, that's an extreme example of where those things show up. And then we, ha we have to then go deeper in, or broader, I guess, to, to understand that there's always a spiritual dimension. And even thinking about it, is it either, or do I call an exorcist? I'll call, I'll call priests. And you already mentioned unbound ministry. I'll, I'll call priests who are or at least trained in deliverance regularly to work with clients not because we need a full out exorcism. And a lot of these exorcist priests will often say like, well, yeah, we'll, we'll do some deliverance prayer for a little while because there is a certain kind of stickiness that speaks to a, a, a covering over of the freedom of the human person. And sometimes that can be really deeply psychological. And sometimes that can be, have, have its sort of etiology. It's, it's, it's Genesis and something that's more, more spiritual. And we want to make sure we're covering all our bases. And then you learn over time. I asked him, I asked Rich Gallagher, you know, how do, how do you know? Like before I said the token, he goes, I already knew this, this was going to be a, a spiritual case. I said, well, how do you know? But even before I mentioned the token, he said, well, you listed like three different symptoms that could all be severe mental illness. But when they're in that combination, it's probably not, you know, and I was like a new student. You know, I, I didn't know that I was an, a new a new psychologist. I hadn't yet had that experience or had developed that wisdom yet. He could nail it in, in a second. But but he he could see that because it's like, oh, that combination was what was different. You don't find that in just a regular old run of the mill psychological illness. So it's it's it gets a little tricky to kind of navigate through that. But there's definitely people who do. So what you're saying is I need a few exorcists on speed dial. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs>